Piers Morgan launches a campaign to bring down Boris Johnson and we expose the BBC and ITV for crossing the line in biased reporting. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the day. Uh, the first video we talked about the chaos inside the European Union. This video is going to be about the British mainstream media and their biased reportings. You've already seen a lot of it, a lot of examples on this channel about the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Sky News. Today is specifically about Piers Morgan and Good Morning Britain. His show has for the past nine months been used as a platform for propaganda. Now, he still has a lot of base, a lot of supporters, uh, but he has become so irrational that, you know, every now and then, you know, you still watch it and you agree with a lot of things that Piers Morgan would say. But he's come out with a new plan, a new campaign, uh, using his propaganda machine uh, in a, on ITV to uh, not only criticise the government, because that's all he's been doing for the past almost year, uh, but actually this is all about uh, pushing Boris Johnson to resign. They started by publishing an, an opinion poll on Twitter, of all places, uh, to, to you know pretend that this is what's representing the British opinion. Uh, and then they decided to spend the whole day um, having, well, firstly, Robert Jenrick, one of the Tory ministers, on the show, where they hardly gave him a chance to talk. It was just Piers Morgan ranting at him and then saying, is your boss going to resign? And then we've got more examples. Let's go to this one first. You've made, you've made far bigger catastrophic mistakes, haven't you? Not locking down when most other countries were doing it back in March, April, which people now believe may have cost 25,000 lives. But what I want to know is, what's he sorry for the decisions he's done? Can you tell us? Does the Prime Minister regret anything he's done? Yeah, so starting from there, I'm not, I'm not going to show the whole thing because he, he wanted to ask one question, but he spent two minutes just ranting at Robert Jenrick. Some of the things he mentioned is absolutely right. I've criticised Boris Johnson's government on this channel over the last nine months a lot on a number of issues, a lot of U-turns, a lot of delayed decisions. So this is not some sort of tribalist video to defend Boris Johnson for absolutely no reason. This is no longer about just randomly criticising or defending the government. This is all about knowing where the line is and knowing what Piers Morgan is actually doing right now because his uh, show, GMB, uh, on Twitter decided to use a couple of clips, interesting clips from the show, and they were so biased in terms of the cutting of it, they decided to post a, a very short clip of a panel that Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid um, had with Jonathan Ashworth, the Labour Shadow Minister, and a number of others, and they only decided to show uh, Jonathan Ashworth's opinion, who said that yes, Boris Johnson should resign. Boris Johnson, we've, we're running a poll on Good Morning Britain whether he should resign. Um, and because he said he's done everything he could, and we have the worst record in the world last week uh, for deaths at the moment. 64%. 64% of good morning. Yeah, 64% of our viewers want him to resign. I mean, it's a serious question. W what is accountability? Should the prime minister now fall on his sword? Should he accept? For he said he said it's all on him. He says I was prime minister. I take full responsibility. So yeah, so that's actually interesting. When we move on, what he decided to do, um, which is kind of this is the tricky part, because obviously yesterday was announced that we have now crossed the 100,000 um, figure in terms of uh, people who have lost their lives. Uh, just to obviously clarify, this is the figure that uh, people um, have lost their lives with the virus. So, you know, they could have had different reasons, but they're obviously they're still in the same list. And every life matters, regardless of how they go. So this is obviously a massive tribute to everyone. This is not about that. This is not about the fact that 100,000 people didn't really matter. This is about the fact that GMB decided to use this. Firstly, it looked nice at first. It was a nice tribute because they decided to name a number of people on this list to so go through the back, uh, stories, backstories, uh, which is really powerful, of course, very emotional. But then he used this to follow up with saying that, see, I'm humanizing this situation even more to use it against Boris Johnson to push for him to resign. This morning, we pay tribute to all of those who have died and to those who have been left behind. With their family's permission, here are just some of their stories. Maria Rico from Leicestershire died at the age of 76 on the 1st of November. Maria's family say that she was an amazing person. 
Yeah, so you think that was just supposed to be a nice tribute. No, it wasn't because then they decided to make the whole thing jokey. They decided to post this on the show uh, as Piers Corbyn, uh, Piers Morgan's uh, rather, uh, alternative cabinet. So this was supposed to be, yeah, a jokey thing where they've decided to have a number of people to replace the current government. You know, it's just supposed to be satire now, apparently. Uh, so they have, uh, firstly, let's go through a few of them. So Marcus Bashford is supposed to be the education secretary. I mean, firstly, Marcus Bashford did a very, very powerful campaign recently on uh, the free school meals, and he had a lot of public support. Um, but I'm not really sure if he has any background when it comes to education. Uh, so and then we've got, obviously, Captain so Tom Moore as Defence Secretary, and um, obviously we're going to have Dr. Hillary Jones as Health Secretary because he's a doctor on the, the show Good Morning Britain and a number of others. Again, you got Laura Tobin, who's the, the who's in charge of the weather um, uh, forecast in on, on this show. The issue that I have is that so apart from the people who are part of the show, <laughs> the rest of it is simply a list of virtue signaling names that's supposed to be, look, these are the angels. I mean, yes, some of them are actually you know, good names, a lot of people who've done a lot of good things, but what is this supposed to pro be proving? Is this supposed to be about what the government have done wrong, or is it supposed to be about the fact that uh, Piers, Morgan, and Piers Morgan suddenly has some sort of solution as an alternative government? Because even the Daily Star have come out to actually do this front page saying that, oops, we seem to have created a monster because it's now about Piers Morgan versus Boris Johnson, apparently. This is the new battle. A, a celebrity is now apparently going to be powerful enough to bring down the British government. Now, I'm not really sure how to take this because the, the press this morning, all these newspapers, decided to go with the same line, which is absolutely fine because uh, yesterday um, Boris Johnson came out to apologise, take responsibility for the 100,000 and he's, you know, Metro has, I am deeply sorry for every life lost. Uh, we have the son uh, saying we will remember them, fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, and uh, many grandparents who have been taken. Uh, and then we have the, even the Daily Telegraph saying that, um, well, I am deeply sorry for every life that has been lost, as Boris Johnson said. Uh, and then Daily Mail, I am deeply sorry. So again, we have a number of others, in, again, every single paper had a similar sort of front page, except for one, except for the Daily Mirror, who decided to have a different main uh, picture for the front page, uh, which is the Daily Mirror's campaign. And then they decided to put Boris's quote, or Boris's story, the top right corner, very negative, very grim, and uh, yeah, to completely ignore it. Again, this is why, if we're talking about public health and this crisis, it's not supposed to be partisan. It's not supposed to be some sort of tribalist game. You know, it, people on the left keep claiming that we are all in this together and this goes above party politics, but does it really? I mean, I, I can't remember the last time Piers Morgan, for example, coming out on his show to pay tribute to some of the good things that the government have done. Some of them. Um, and because, uh, again, even on this channel, I'm trying to be objective. I've criticised a lot of things that the government have done, but I've also praised them when they do the right things. Um, but apparently that's not really what we're getting from the British mainstream media. Speaking of the mainstream media, the next target is the BBC. The BBC came out yesterday uh, because this was the funeral of one of the IRA members. They decided to tweet saying that, uh, you know, the funeral of the IRA veteran. Yes, you heard that right. Veteran. What do you expect? People kicked off. Everybody was upset because you can't just randomly uh, treat the enemies as, you know, this is supposed to be the BBC, British Broadcasting uh, Corporation, uh, calling him veteran, because a lot of people said, well, they're very scared of what might happen if they don't call that guy, uh, Eamon um, McCourt, a veteran. Hmm, interesting. But all the complaints that uh, were sent about the BBC, according to Harry Cole, who, was, who reported earlier this morning, uh, that uh, the BBC have been now forced to take down the tweet, the article, and apologise. But that's not enough, because obviously they did describe this guy who was very violent, who was very anti-freedom, anti-Britain, uh, as a veteran. And then they decided to clarify this by saying that we use the term veteran to describe uh, him and uh, McCourt, uh, and because he was 
very much involved with the Irish republicanism as a movement and we accept that that was you know it wasn't the right thing to do and now he's now has been described by the BBC they say as an IRA man in our online news report that's not that's not helping because now the woke side are gonna come out and say that you, you can't call him IRA man you're assuming his gender so <laughs> If Justin Trudeau finds out, he won't be happy with you, BBC. You're going to have to, you know, avoid assuming his gender. And then you're going to have to go extremely woke. Not really sure what you're going to replace him with. Maybe IRA people kind. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, but, you know, jokes aside, this is what the, the public pressure on the BBC uh, have actually done. So sometimes it, it works. Sometimes you force them to apologise, make U-turns. So now uh, McCourt has now been described as the IRA man. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, so we're I just wanted to do uh, focus on the mainstream media in this video because it's been a while since uh, we have exposed some of the hypocrisy and double standards that they do, but also the biased reporting, whether it's the BBC or ITV. So if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe. And as usual, click on the notification bell next to it and click on all, not subscribe, uh, not uh, personalized. And if you want to take advantage of a lot of perks and benefits that we have for the members of the channel, become a member. Check out the link in the description. We do have our weekly Q&A's, weekly video podcasts, and also the weekly um, video calls on Zoom on Wednesdays. We just did one uh, just before this video with a number of members that we had tonight. So thanks again for everyone who turned up and thanks again for everyone who's been supporting the channel either via uh, membership or via PayPal and the subscribers in general. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya Tusi and I'll see you guys in the next video.